Hello friends, we got here chapter 4 in 3 turns, and this is the first time we get to play around with the Sigurd Ring and the Celica Ring, both of which are very powerful in LTC as you can imagine. And this route that I've devised um, is actually impressively reliable, uh, at, especially at this point Whatever in the game. And the, so the main objective here is going to be killing the boss, and that involves... I need to move Celine her max distance every turn here, and I also need to bait out the boss, because you actually... The, the map designers were, you know, fairly clever. Where Celine starts, um, she is like just one tile out of range of being able to warp to the boss naturally um, so the way it works is we're going to actually have to bait out the boss I'm happy to help. so that he you know contributes to some of that distance so i'm going to move pretty much all of my forces towards the north um, i don't need everyone but just enough to clear out the enemies that will be in the way and then uh, boucheron scene. and clan can kind of stick at the bottom collect that village with the javelin Okay, so uh, Vander gets Sigurd and he waits there, kind of so uh, the enemies that will attack him will be in a um, like good position to pick them off. I'll explain on the next turn. Okay, so yeah, Alfred is positioned exactly there so that that Cav always attacks from there. Um, and I want that Pegasus Knight to be over there and then the Armor Knight. Um, doesn't really matter too much, but him being there is fine. And uh, Boucheron survives this with exactly 1 HP, which is quite nice when I discovered that. Okay, so this Pegasus Knight that Chloe attacks on her turn, or on the end phase, enemy phase rather, um, it needs to specifically attack her from above. So that's like the main, pretty much the only RNG in this, in this route. If Chloe, uh, if the Pegasus Knight attacks from the right side of Chloe, it blocks the way, and you'll see why that matters. But yeah, so that's pretty much the only RNG. It's fifty. It should be fifty-fifty, uh, so it's not unreasonable or anything. But Sorry. Wanted to call that out. So yeah, so far just cleaning up those enemies down there. So Alir will finish off this axe cav, no problem with the right here. And so by being able to attack the axe cav from here, now Alir's personal will be affecting the fort and this allows me, allows Etie to exactly one shot that Pegasus Knight. Um, it doesn't matter even which direction the Pegasus Knight attacks from. Uh, it, this this way it covers both right side and top side, so that's nice. Uh, and then here I just get a lucky crit. Doesn't matter because Fram can go heal her afterwards uh, if she does take a hit. And then Alfred's just gonna be here to kind of bait the uh, enemies over there. Just to make sure that Louis does not get blocked because if he if <laughs> if the enemies kind of like prevent him from crossing those forests or like you know to the north side of the fort then there's gonna be a mage that comes and obliterates him. Um, and then you'll notice that I don't collect that village uh, it only gives 3,000 gold or something, and honestly, it's not that much. It so it's not worth it because it gives up that fort positioning, which is not good. Okay, so yeah, Chloe waits over there I can still um, so that she can bait one of those mages that's near the boss. Okay, so you see here, Alfred kind of lures these enemies away. 
And then the boss attacks Vander first here because he does one more damage than the mage. So he does eight, nine damage and the mage does eight damage. So, which is actually, which is like very integral to the fact that this all works, that the boss like attacks first there. Um, yeah, so then Chloe baits the other mage away. That's also fairly important. And it's excellent that the the brigand just wants to raid the village anyways and ignores Vander because uh, it would actually be a huge problem if he was his AI prioritized attacking more. Um, here I'm just kind of like forgetting exactly how I routed this, but yeah, I just remember Clan can kind of just heal up, Boucheron just does his thing by sitting in the forest. Okay, so here I need to clean up some enemies because otherwise they will be... Actually, no, th this specific configuration of them doesn't matter too much, but we'll get through this. still rather clean them up right now for EXP. Um, sometimes the enemies can align in such a way that uh, that they like block Celica's... not Celica, I... <laughs> Celine's movement. Did any of y'all do that too? Just like accidentally just call characters by their em equipped emblem? Because, uh, you, yeah, like 70% of the time Celine is just Celica. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I'm just kind of uh, sweeping them for some EXP. Showing off there with Lodestar Rush. Yeah, so that that mage with surge will completely destroy Louis if uh, if it gets in range. So I'm just gonna go one north, and we'll take that. We'll take care of that. Uh, I don't even remember exactly the enemy attack order, so could not matter, but but it plays it safe. And here, the only reasonable thing I can do is finish off that Pegasus Knight. You know, grab some more EXP. It's always good. So here, since that mage attacked me from melee range, I can finish it off with Iron Axe here. And it's fairly accurate. So that's why, I, that's pretty much the reason why I'm saying this run, this route is like reliable. And then here, Celine can warp Ragnarok right to the boss. This is exactly 10 tiles away. And then you can do that, and then on enemy phase, she will finish off the boss. And it was important that the mage was able to be picked off right there, and then also like the other mage was distracted by Chloe, because Celine cannot survive two hits. She can only take one hit from the boss and then like with very little HP. You'll see right here, yeah, two HP. So. You have to make sure that those other mages were out of the picture, and then it becomes a very reliable enemy phase clear. So that was chapter 4 in 3 turns.